Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Don't mind me looking extremely homeschool mom professional right now. You know, I am actually dealing with a little bit of like a head cold or something. So if I sound strange, that's why. But I really wanted to get this video out. I thought that this week I would do another homeschool video for you all. Um, it seemed like you guys actually really liked the curriculum video that I did a few weeks ago. And today I want to talk about kindergarten. This is not my first rodeo. My boys are pretty young. I have a third grader, a first grader, and a kindergartner, and a toddler who is one and a half. Um, and we have been homeschooling since the beginning and we plan to continue. <clears throat> Um, there are a few things that I have learned since we started homeschooling, what, I guess four years ago now. My third son, third, three, not two, <clears throat> my third son is starting kindergarten this year. When my first son started kindergarten, I know that I was very much overthinking it, and I, I know that this is normal. And I think it's good to go into homeschooling with a healthy awareness of the responsibility that is on your shoulders as a parent that is responsible for schooling your child. Um, but at the same time, I think that I put a little bit too much of an unnecessary weight on myself because the reality is um, a five or six year old that's starting kindergarten, all right, I got an itch. A five or six year old that is starting kindergarten is typically not going to benefit any more from a set curriculum than they would you just spending time working on one thing with them for 15 minutes a day. Um, I think it's more about being consistent than trying to pull in all these curriculums and like doing all these different things. So just know that if you are getting ready to start your first child in kindergarten this year, you can ease into it and they will be just fine. They will still be learning. What you're doing is going to be enough as long as you are being consistent with something. That doesn't even have to be a set curriculum. It could be having like a nature hike schedule where you do that once a week and then you spend 10 or 15 minutes a day working on phonics. Um, you spend 10 or 15 minutes a day just working on basic math principles like counting to 20 or you know simple addition, shapes, number recognition, things like that. Just focusing a little bit on something every day. It doesn't have to be in a specific order or anything like that. So if you are starting and you feel like you're totally lost and you have no clue where to start and you can't decide on a curriculum and you're overwhelmed by curriculum, just know that you don't have to have curriculum. <clears throat> I wanna be editing out all these coughs here. Now, you do want to know your state requirements. For us in Tennessee, the only thing that we really have to provide the state is a record of attendance, which here they have to attend school for 180 days per year. And we have to provide the courses that your child took. Um, and that doesn't have to look any particular way. It can be you putting together your own kind of collaboration of reading books or, you know, going on field trips. Um, having discussions about a specific thing um, and you don't even have to do like science and history and all that kind of stuff in kindergarten. There's no requirement that you have to do all of those subjects. Um, I have always said that in these very early years of school we really hone in and focus on the three R's which is reading, writing, and arithmetic. And the reason for that is because if your kids don't get that base of knowledge in those core subjects, it's going to be more difficult for them later on to really dive deep into the other subjects. Being able to read is a key to getting there. So my biggest tip when it comes to homeschooling kindergarten 
is to focus on reading. And it doesn't matter where your child is before you start kindergarten, they can be, they, they can not know any of their letters, um, or they could know their letters, they could be starting to sound things out, they could already be reading simple words. But my biggest recommendation is don't neglect teaching reading consistently every day in kindergarten. And here's why. Think about if your second grader is fully reading by the time your next child is starting kindergarten, just think about how much easier that's going to make your life. Um, how much is going to benefit them, how much more confident they're going to be in any work that they do once they're able to read. My oldest son can read. He's very independent in his schoolwork already, even at the age of eight, and he has been for the last year or two already because he learned how to read in an early age. And honestly, I don't think that had everything to do with me. I think he's naturally picked up on it. Um, but at the same time, I was very consistent in teaching him reading in kindergarten, even though he already was reading those simple words, um, like three letter words. I really wanted to capitalize on that then because I knew that here in a year or two, I'm gonna have another child that's going to need my attention and schooling and having my oldest son reading is going to make that so much easier. This is not any judgment on anyone's child who is not yet reading. And I'm not saying that your kid's gonna be fully reading by the end of kindergarten. My first grader is still a long way from being able to read proficiently, um, but we did work on it last year. <clears throat> and that's because I knew that I was gonna have another one coming up behind him that was going to need my attention, or more of my full attention because he's not yet reading. I feel like a sound. I don't know. So this year with my son who is five that is starting kindergarten, we are going to be doing the ready to read curriculum from Gather Round. If you're familiar with Gather Round, you know that it's a unit study and it's meant to be done at the kitchen table, all of the kids, all the ages together. They each have their own individual notebooks um, that's tailored to their grade level, even though they're all studying the same thing, kind of working on the same kind of thing. I could have put my first grader and my kindergartner um, maybe in the early reader level, but probably in the pre-reader level to kind of go along with my third grader who's gonna be doing the lower elementary level. Um, but the reason I didn't do that, even though it would have been easier, is because I knew that they wouldn't really be learning the foundations of reading that they need in order to progress in that area. Even if it's difficult, even if it's more work, I want to focus on reading with them because I see how much that's gonna benefit them in the future. So that is why I have always focused on reading above anything else when we first start school. Um, is because it just makes everything else so much easier and it, it gives them so much confidence. <clears throat> and so when you're trying to pull in all these different curriculums and figure out what you need to do with your kindergartner, I would say if you're feeling overwhelmed, don't do anything but spend 15 to 20 minutes every day working on a reading curriculum. <clears throat> or if you don't want to do a curriculum, work on some flashcards or just work on reading along with them, showing them words. If you read with your child every single day for 15 minutes and you encourage them to read along with you, they're gonna learn to read eventually. Now with that being said, there are some reading curriculums that I really like. With my first son, when he was learning how to read, we used All About Reading um, and he loved it. I know that it made a huge difference in his reading ability. Um, so I would recommend that if you have a child that is just starting out, there's a pre-reader level, and then there's also other levels after that. There's spelling that goes along with it. Um, but that's a curriculum that we really liked. <clears throat> Another thing that I highly recommend is Reading Eggs, which it is a device-based, it's not really a curriculum, um, it's more like a supplemental program. I will say that I believe that was the main thing that taught my oldest son how to read, is playing reading eggs. Um, <clears throat> it's lessons, but it also feels like a game to them at the same time. But the amount that they're learning is incredible. And it's very engaging, and yeah, 
it's great. The only other curriculum that we have personally tried in these early years for reading is the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts, which I do really like. Um, that is what we used for my, my second son last year in his kindergarten year. He used that, he was on the K level. I would continue to use that, but the reason that I'm choosing to go with Gather Around this year is because I have three kids now that need my attention and um, it's also something that we can do along with our community. We actually have some friends that are going to be doing the same curriculum. So it's something really simple and easy that we can pull together, that we can kind of do co-op style with our friends. They're buying the curriculum on their own and doing it on their own time at home. but. It's something that we're doing together to kind of stay accountable. And I just knew that my kids needed something new this year, um, something that, and something that would make it easier on me. Once you have multiple kids that are being schooled, you know that you need to streamline the process as much as possible, especially when you're a busy homesteading family like us. I'm actually going to be doing um, the ready to read level with both my first grader and kindergartner this year just to make things a little bit more streamlined um, and then we'll be doing the unit studies as well i'll be doing those with uh, my third grader and pulling them in to that as well unfortunately <clears throat> the more i talk the more worse i sound so those are my very quick, very simple tips for kindergarten. I really wanted this to be more of an encouragement than anything else that you can homeschool, that kindergarten, it's a big deal, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming and it doesn't have to be strict. It doesn't have to be a lot. It just needs to be consistent and it just needs to be focused on reading in my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what other homeschool videos you guys would like to see or any other kind of videos that you would like to see. It really helps me when it comes to planning these videos. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe for more content on faith and family and farming. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.